Scott Garrison here with DynaGrow. If you're new to growing, whether it be indoor, outdoor, greenhouse, or hybrid, you're going to need some quality genetics to cultivate. You can start propagation using something like JV plugs and seeds, or you can fast track your process by using proven strains and genetics. Cloning is a great way to achieve predictable, repeatable yields, but often costs more to set up because it requires additional equipment that seed propagation doesn't. Buying clones can be really expensive and availability can be limited. In-house propagation is the best way to mitigate contamination and infestations that are typically associated with transporting plants from one farm to another. Cloning machines are very efficient and can eliminate a huge amount of labor and attention that other cloning methods can require. I recommend cloning machines to new growers because it applies constant moisture to the plant stem and doesn't allow drooping or wilting, reducing overall stress, which translate to higher success rates and faster rooting times. Rooting hormones are critical in rapid root development. Some companies will use one, some will employ another. I prefer to use Dynagrow's KLN, which incorporates dual hormones in a single part solution. I usually see faster rooting development with higher success rates. Once you're ready to begin, you'll need a healthy mother plant to take cuttings from. Plants that have been treated with soluble silicate have thicker cell walls, which translates to reduced water release during transpiration. This gives you more durable, robust clones to work with. Soluble silicate also increases cell elasticity and can lead to higher oil content and VOC levels. Higher oil content and thicker cell walls play a key role in preventing pests and pathogens. What region of the plant you take your cutting from will play a key role in the way that it develops and shapes itself after it's rooted. Cuttings taken from the central main stalks or center portions of the plant will typically result in longer, stretchier clones as they contain cells that are programmed to stretch and run to get above their neighboring plants. Cuttings taken from the lower secondary growth contain less of these cells and typically have shorter internodal spacing. When taking fresh cuttings, you want to use a sterile blade and have water prepared with a solution of KLN or SuperThrive, pH between 6 and 6.5, mixed to a concentration of about 100 to 200 ppms. You'll want to verify this information with a calibrated pH and ppm meter. Cutting should be 3 to 5 inches in length, and there should be no more than 2.5 inches protruding beneath the lowest branch coming from the main stem. Try to make your cuttings uniform, as this will play into the uniformity of your crop during cultivation. If you're not 100% sure that your plants are free of pests and pathogens, then it's a good idea to treat them as if they are contaminated. Performing a neem oil solution dip or other plant-based therapy is recommended. After a few days in the cloner, you will start to see spikes protruding from the sides of your stem. These spikes will grow to form the lateral and taproot systems of your new plant. You don't want to let these roots grow for too long unsupported, as it will send misinformation to the plant about its surroundings. Transplanting your plant into the proper container at the right time is crucial. When transplanting, take extreme care not to damage the root system. It is important that the media is moist and cool and free of excess nutrients. Hot soil can shock the root system. Dry soil can pull moisture and nutrients from the plant. Excessive nutrients can be toxic to new roots and prevent new roots from developing. 